Good afternoon, and you're very welcome uh, to our uh, webinar this afternoon here at the IIEA. When I say here, I mean it's everywhere really because we're all joining each other yet again, uh, remotely, virtually, but it's wonderful to have uh, so many of you uh, with us this afternoon, and thank you for bearing with us uh, with the, uh, the change of time for, uh, to four o'clock. Um, so we're delighted uh, this afternoon, really delighted to be joined by Elisa Ferreira, who's the European Commissioner for Cohesion and Reforms. And the Commissioner has been uh, generous enough to take time from what is clearly an extremely busy schedule at the moment uh, in terms of the agenda of work uh, that she has. The Commissioner will speak to us for a, about 20 minutes or so, and then we'll go to the Q&A uh, with our audience. And you'll be able to join that Q&A in the normal way um, using the Q&A function on Zoom with which you are very familiar at this stage. You'll see it on your screen. Um, feel free to send in your questions uh, throughout the session. Like if a question occurs to you, put it in then, if you, if you will, rather than waiting. Because what often happens uh, with webinars, people are listening, obviously, they want to concentrate on what's being said. A question occurs, but then they wait. And then we tend to get all the questions together at the very, very end, and we're, we're trying to collate through them and so on. And of course, the, the earlier you send your question in, the more likely it is for us to reach it. Please also identify yourself when you're putting in the question, if you don't mind, if you have an organization that you represent um, or a particular uh, role in life, title, anything like that, uh, please uh, identify uh, yourself uh, when, when, you ask, uh, when you ask the question. Um, Reminder also that the presentation by Commissioner Ferreira and the Q&A are both uh, on the record. Um, and reminder also that if you're using Twitter, um, feel free to tweet in the course of the presentation, the course of this, this meeting, and the handle is at IIEA. So, um, as I said, I'm delighted to uh, welcome this afternoon on behalf of the IIEA, um, Commissioner Elisa Ferreira. And the Commissioner is, holds the, as I said, the Cohesion and Reforms portfolio um, in the Von Leyden um, Commission. Um, she uh, had, prior to that, I mean, she had a, a very stellar career um, uh, in, in politics uh, and in, in public public administration. Um, she was, for example, uh, vice governor of the Bank of Portugal uh, from, I think, 2017 to 2019. Um, in political life, she's a member of the Party of European Socialists. Um, it's always nice to welcome a fellow member of the PES, if I may be indulged just to throw that in from the chair. Um, she is the commissioner, was a minister during the Guterres uh, Premiership. She was Portugal's Minister for the Environment from 1995 to 1999 and Minister for Planning from 1999 to 2002. The commissioner holds a PhD in economics from the University of Reading. Um, she, prior to coming into this role, uh, Commissioner Ferreira had advocated uh, for a considerable period um, for the transition to renewable energy. Um, it's a, an area in which she has taken a huge interest. And now as a European Commissioner uh, herself, she has said that she is um, taking great care to integrate the uh, European Green Deal into her work, especially through the Just Transition Fund. But she can tell you all about that herself because it's now my great pleasure to hand over uh, for her presentation to Commissioner Elisa Ferreira. You're very welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this kind, nice introduction. Uh, thank you for your kind words and thank you for this invitation. And I think it's really the right time for uh, the think tanks and the very qualified people like yourself uh, to be and the members of the Irish Institute for International and European Affairs to engage in this kind of dialogue because uh, we, wa we are in a, in a very critical moment, full of hope, full of risk. Uh, and, uh, and so we have got really to work together and to share uh, our vision and, uh, and join forces so that we get back better, so to speak. So, ladies and gentlemen, I am, in fact, very happy to have the opportunity uh, today to discuss with you about the future I mean, of Europe and the future of Ireland in Europe. Uh, it is a distinguished institution that you are chairing, 
and uh, I, I, I really and sincerely regret also very much that I'm, I'm here in Strasbourg uh, and not in Dublin with you today. I have, I have a lot of admiration uh, for the Irish tradition of constructive and uh, thoughtful engagement uh, with Europe and with the world. And today, more than ever, all of us in Europe need this uh, tradition in order to be able to work for our common future and our common good. Working together as Europeans is what procured the corona vaccines. Working together is what enabled cohesion policy to rapidly mobilize 310 million euros in the middle of the health crisis to procure key in equipment for Ireland's health services. Last year, cohesion policy covered a third of the protective equipment Ireland needed. And working together, it was with, uh, it was, uh, and, and working together is what will get us further out of this crisis. As you know, Europe has taken, taken the unprecedented step of borrowing using Europe's AAA credit rating. We are creating and boosting investment funds, which will drive the recovery. First of all, we have the new REACT EU initiative. This initiative will invest or will support uh, Ireland in 88 million euros to support, in fact, em employment and growth. Second, we are currently discussing Ireland's future recovery and resilience plan that will provide close to 1 billion euros of European investments in Ireland's recovery from this crisis, as well as in moving in the green and digital transition. And third, cohesion policy stands ready to invest 1.3 billion euros in Ireland in innovation, renewable energy, cross-border cooperation, and much more. All these investments add up to a once in a generation opportunity to build the country back for a better future together as Europeans. I think it was Jane Joyce who said, I am tomorrow what I established today. For us, the question is what Ireland and what Europe do we want tomorrow? And what must we do today so that we reach that target tomorrow? First and foremost, we must invest in the green transition. And I am impressed by Ireland's climate and clean energy ambitions as set out in the National Energy and Climate Plan. Anyone who has stood on the west coast of, coast of Ireland on a stormy day can attest the abundant potential for power, for namely for wind power. You are putting it to good use with a long-term goal of generating 70% of electricity from renewable energy sources and accelerating the phasing out of coal and peat fire generation. This ambitious goal is a great collective project and a challenge. It requires considerable investment in offshore wind energy. It also requires investment in the power infrastructure, including the Celtic interconnector, which uh, with the 500, uh, 530 million euro grant will link Ireland to the European supply chain. Since different renewables provide energy at different times, this link seems to us will make energy supply more stable for all of us. There is also the challenge of renewable transport. Ireland has a great ambition, nearly 1 million electric vehicles by 2030, and we need practical steps to make this happen. Another challenge is the issue of home heating. In Ireland, this is still mostly based on fossil fuels. The International Energy Agency tells us that in order to be carbon neutral by 2050, we must stop selling fossil fuel boilers by 2025. 
In addition, Ireland also has to catch up in the field of building insulation. It's not only Ireland, it's a lot of countries, which is why it is encouraging to see this topic tackled in Ireland's recovery and resilience plan. I urge you to make full use of European support through the renovation wave. Indeed, for all Ireland's green investments, I urge you to make the full use of, of, the full use of European funds, such as cohesion policy and the recovery and resilience facility, as well as the technical support and expertise available under the technical support instrument. Second, there is another instrument, the new Brexit Adjustment Reserve. It is a tangible expression of European solidarity with the people of Ireland and other countries most affected by Brexit. We recognize the steps Ireland has already taken to assist stakeholders and businesses in managing change. We also recognize the need for further support. The Brexit Adjustment Reserve is a 5 billion euro fund to help cover public expenditure linked to Brexit. Ireland will be naturally the biggest single beneficiary with support likely to exceed 1 billion euros. Negotiations between the co-legislators have started and we will have a political trilogue next week. So the negoti final negotiation on the legal text between the Commission, us, and Council and Parliament. I hope, I have sincere hopes that we'll conclude it rapidly, if possible, still in June. My third and last topic is the Peace Plus program. Our biggest objective, of course, is to support the Good Friday Agreement and continuing with peace and reconciliation in the border regions and throughout the island of Ireland and Northern Isle. The Peace Plus program is our concrete contribution to the goal of peace and reconciliation and the Good Friday Agreement. Over the past 25 years, we have invested more than 3 billion euros in specific actions to bring communities together and to build trust. This plus is the only of our programs with the UK that will continue after Brexit. We are sorry about it, but that was the option from the UK. As recent events in Northern Ireland have shown, unfortunately, this work of reconciliation is needed even more than before. I hope that the talks between the Irish and British side on details will conclude soon. So ladies and gentlemen, let me come to an end. When I think of the future of Ireland and of Europe, I am very confident. It is good to see Ireland's green ambitions, the skills and capacities of the Celtic tiger at the service of the environment. We'll strongly support it through the recovery and resilience program and through cohesion. As for the impact of the UK leaving the European Union, Europe will mobilize its funds for Ireland. Ireland will be the major beneficiary, as I just mentioned, of the Brexit Adjustment Reserve. And we will continue with the important Peace Plus program to support peace and stability on the island. Ireland will remain very, very close to our hearts. So thank you for your attention, and I look forward to our discussion. Thank you.